Hey there, it's Dr. Sarah here. Today on the She Found Motherhood podcast, I have the pleasure of chatting with Melissa DeSalle. Melissa is a pelvic health physiotherapist and founder of Mommy Berries. Melissa created Mommy Berries to help support pregnant and postpartum people on their journey from pregnancy through to postpartum. Melissa has an amazing Instagram community, a Facebook group, and several excellent online programs to help prepare for pregnancy and birth, as well as postpartum recovery. If you're interested in learning more, head to our website, www.mommyberries.com. We'll put the link in the show notes below. And Melissa has kindly extended a discount to any of our She Found Motherhood listeners for 10% off any of her courses. Simply enter the coupon code SHEFOUNDHEALTH. We'll link that in the show notes below. Today, Melissa and I talk about the importance of recovery after birth, and she provides some tips on how you can recover postpartum whether you've had a vaginal birth or a cesarean section. We'll get right into the podcast after this short message. Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. We are Sarah and Alicia, two doctor moms who are creating a community rich with high quality information to support people through the journey from pregnancy to parenthood. Our goal is to empower with knowledge and decrease the anxieties during this time in our lives. We cover topics from fertility through the fourth trimester with the odd birth story sprinkled in. Come join us on Instagram or Facebook at she.found.motherhood or check us out on our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca. Some of these podcasts have been sponsored, which allows us to continue putting out free, amazing content. But don't worry, this won't affect our advice or recommendations. And we only partner with companies we know and trust or have come highly recommended to us by you, our listeners. She Found Health is meant for general medical information only. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The information you hear does not apply to every situation. If you have questions or if you've received different advice, please contact your healthcare provider. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions that you may have regarding a medical condition. The views expressed by She Found Motherhood and our guests are not representative of any institution with which we are affiliated. Hey, Melissa, welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. Oh, I'm absolutely touched to be here. Oh, I'm super stoked to have you. So Melissa and I were chatting just before we started recording, and I actually think it would be really interesting, Melissa, for you to share a little bit about your story. I know you're a pelvic floor physio, but how you got to do this work specifically and what sort of inspired you to create Mommy Berries? Yeah. So I graduated, I've been a physio for about 16 years and I probably would have been voted the least likely to get into pelvic health. (laughs) I actually spent most of my time like in a hospital doing neuro, working with people that had had head injuries. And then I had a, my first baby out my vagina yeah. <laughs> seven and a half years ago. And I always say I broke, like I would say I went into it kind of feeling like I'm strong, I'm fit, I'm a physio and I can do this. And then I came out like broken and, but I didn't understand any of it. And nobody asked me like, no, my friends didn't talk about it. I was one of the first of my friends to probably have babies. So maybe that's part of the reason, but mm-hmm. no one talked about it. My doc didn't ask my, like, I didn't ask because I just assumed I, I was normal that I was having pee issues, sex issues mm-hmm. and diastasis issues. And I would say the biggest thing is I couldn't get back to activity with like, without feeling like I needed help. Like everything was breaking. Mm-hmm. And so that's when I started doing some of my own looking and I saw someone that did pelvic health physio and I was like, mind blown. Holy, this is just another musculoskeletal injury. Like we treat this as physios, but I probably didn't listen to the two lectures in school that we talked about it. Cause I was 20 and hadn't had kids yet. And I wasn't going to do that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I would say it was my own experience that I was like, wait a minute, why don't we, these are muscles that we're talking about here. Look at what they go through during pregnancy, like this massive stretch of our core and our pelvic floor. And nothing is strong when it's long. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and then, and then I was like, well, no wonder I'm having all these issues. I want to help people do this. And so I started in the clinic seeing people like myself and I kept feeling the same thing over and over again, everyone coming in, feeling some version of broken after having a baby. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, why do we wait till after? Like, I felt like I was a bit of a broken record with some of the things I was talking about. So I'm like, I need to create something to provide information online because too many people are nervous to put their hand up and say, I pee my pants or Mm -hmm. something's falling out of my vagina or I can't have sex since I had a baby. Mm -hmm. No one wants to come in and share everything right away. It's like they want to collect the information first. And Mm -hmm. 
sort it out. So anyways, Mommy Berries was basically a spinoff of uh, what I do in the clinics. I just felt that there was so much information that people didn't have to come one-on-one -on -one for initially. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, it's been kind of up in operation for about four years. And I guess the platform is based on supporting women during pregnancy, birth prep and postpartum recovery as it relates to their body. Yeah. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's been a journey, you know, figuring out how best to get that information out to people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sort of similar to why we started what we do, right. Is that we want yeah. pregnant people to understand, you know, what to expect, you know, from sort of a medical and a pregnancy perspective, totally. but this is not our area of expertise. So I'm really excited to have you here. Well, I think it's so great that you guys are, you're mentioning that. Cause I think one of the reasons I reached out to you guys, I think when I first saw your, your page and I thought, Oh, awesome that you guys are doing this because I'm sure you get all the time and I get as a physio people come in and say, I'm so pissed off. My doctor, my midwife didn't tell me about what to do after I'm like, but would you go to them to rehab your ankle? Like you don't go to your doctor for rehab. That's not their job. And I think sometimes you get that flack. Yeah. Get that flack that, you, that you didn't do yeah. a good enough job rehabbing them. And like, that's not your job. Right. So, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. And you know, I think my ideal someday, and maybe we can, we'll talk about this off, yeah. offline, but it's to like have a, I feel like you're best supported through something like this with a team, right? Absolutely. There's not one individual. It's not your doctor. It's not your midwife. It's a team of people, including your, your community, your supports, your physio, your dietitian, right? That's going to support you through your best pregnancy. Totally. And I think if you look at it, like, would you ever ask me to come and deliver your baby? No. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And they, like, yeah. so that you can't do everything. I can't do everything. Right. So yeah. Yeah. yeah it's awesome. So we thought today, cause we haven't really talked about this much in previous podcasts is that um, Melissa, you would talk to us a little bit about pelvic floor post delivery. Yeah. what to expect and sort of common issues and top tips about recovery. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So um, I would say like, if I was just to list like really quickly before we started listed things, like what would I my major take homes? And I would say the number one thing is I think absolutely rest. Like I think just like you would with any other injury and you hear, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have to rest, rest, rest. But I think we're kind of crappy at that lately. You know, we're, we're, we're a society full of lists and, and things to do. And I've, I'm going to use my mat leave to get all this stuff done. And I think, you know, you just have to acknowledge that at a cellular level and a tissue level, we do need rest mm -hmm. like any other surgery or procedure that you have. So that is important, right? And taking the time you need and listening to your body to get the rest you need. But then my number two tip would be rest isn't enough. <laughs> and yeah. I think that I always try to use another injury to compare it to. But if you called me and said, I was just out for a run, Melissa, and I really sprained my ankle really bad. I would say, okay, go home, get off of it, mm -hmm. get it up, elevate it, ice it, and maybe compress it with a tensor bandage or something like that. Like just give it some protection to allow mm -hmm. it to heal. Mm -hmm. And I think we do that at, for postpartum women, we say, go home and rest, get people to help you make you meals, use your padsicles for swelling and use your peri bottle to help your perineum and protect your C-section scar. But, you know, then generally we leave them at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't say anything else. And mm -hmm. if, and I would tell you that, but I think you would know with your ankle that, oh, well, do I just sit here forever? And at six weeks, generally, you're going to get the all clearance from your care provider that you're not going to see them anymore. And you're all clear to resume activity. But would you ever just rest and ice your ankle? And then at six weeks, jump on it or go running first? Like You'd be like, that's crazy physio lady. Why would you tell me to do that? That's dumb advice. Yeah. Right. And, and, but that's what we do to postpartum really women. Interesting comparison. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like, it's like swelling management, put, make your pedicles, use your sits bath and everything, but that's it. Yeah. And, and it doesn't mean that your ankle, you will die after that ankle. Like if you don't rehab that ankle, you won't die. And, and, but I don't know that you'd get back to your trail running again mm -hmm. at a high level. I don't know that you would get back to hit classes without a problem on your ankle either it might be all that always that ankle that has a little bit of swelling or that acts up with pain and that I think that's what we see in postpartum women often is that we do swelling management we let, kind of leave it at that and then they get back to the hard stuff first mm -hmm. because they crave it right they're like mm -hmm. I just want to lose my weight I just want to get into my clothes again I just want to feel strong and do the things that I used to I just want to get a sweat mm -hmm. but I think the problem is that like those are excellent goals, but they're just not the best place to start. And so I think just understanding that time alone is not enough 
if you want to get back to higher level activities. And sometimes I say to people, if you're a sedentary person and you're quite happy to sit, you might be fine if you don't do any rehab, mm-hmm. right? And so just kind of understanding that our body needs help to, to recover. I would say that that's a, a big take home message. Yeah. When you think about that. It's, it's like, oh, that makes sense, right? Oh, it totally does. But we don't, like you said, we don't really think of pregnancy and birth as a musculoskeletal. Exactly. But it is. Absolutely. And I've, I've had flack before by saying that, you know, pregnancy and birth are an injury. I've had someone actually call me out on that and say, that's not fair to say that. And I said, yeah, I totally get it because I agree. Like pregnancy and birth are magical. Like look what our body can do. Yeah, yeah. However, if you don't acknowledge like what the body goes through, I think you leave a lot of women thinking like, well, then I'm broken and I should have recovered better. Yeah. yeah. And thinking and so- that you're the only one and that everyone else's body's totally naturally I do not totally. I don't like the word natural so I'm doing quotations here right exactly yeah but I always tell women I think it's so normal or it's so important to understand like when they come in feeling a bit broken postpartum just to say well of course you feel broken like look at how much your yeah. belly changed and like all of those muscles in your belly are part of your core like that's like the anchor of your body and then yeah and then the pelvic floor muscles that have not only been hold like helping to hold a baby and dealing with all these changes in the pelvis and then in the case of a vaginal birth those muscles stretch upwards of 250 percent to that's let out a baby crazy. that's crazy and in the case of a c-section all of the tissues um, and muscles right that live right above the pelvic floor and part of the core are affected. And mm-hmm. so of course they're going to feel like they can't do their jobs. Well, it just so happens that the jobs of those muscles are embarrassing. So we don't talk about them like mm-hmm. related to sex, related to peeing, pooping, hemorrhoids, prolapse, diastasis. Like we don't really bring that stuff up in conversation, mm-hmm. but it just, just like the, the ankle muscles are there to keep your ankle strong and keep your leg up and da, 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 da the muscles that involved in pregnancy and birth are embarrassing jobs. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and so I think that just knowing that when you come out of a birth, of course, you're going to feel on some level affected. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. And I think that's where I get a lot of women reach out during pregnancy saying I'm terrified of leaking and prolapse and diastasis after. And we touched on this before we recorded Mm -hmm. that anyone that tells me like if I didn't, it didn't even ask people their symptoms if they just said I had a baby two weeks ago in my head I'd be like okay I know you have leaking problems diastasis problems prolapse yeah. problems like that's part of yeah. the injury yeah yeah oh absolutely so when we so you acknowledge that we need to rest and you know manage swelling but that that's not enough what other tips do you give people in terms of like rehabilitating well I always say um you know, that you don't need to wait for six weeks. Cause I think a lot of people think I need to wait and see my care provider. I want to go see my doctor first before I can do anything with you. And I'm like, I respect that. Mm -hmm. However, nothing I give you will go against their advice because I find that a lot of women um, generally are at home kind of like shaking, like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait till that discharge appointment to find I'm I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, just acknowledging that you need to rest, but at the same time, our core and pelvic floor muscles are very reflexive muscles that have to work for us all day in managing our baby in managing our poop and our pee. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. when we cough, they have to work Mm -hmm. when we lift, they have to work. And so they can't have a complete rest. And, and the stuff that I would suggest to people in the early days is not about like gaining any big strength gains, but more just helping those muscles get back online again, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm a big analogies person. And I always describe to people, when you go off on your mat leave, you know, you go off and you take some time off and you come back and you're, even though you have the same skills, you're kind of need a reorientation. You're like, what the heck? Like yes. things, the computer processing is different or there's a new staff member. That's kind of how your body feels after such a major change during pregnancy, followed by, we kind of touched on the injury of birth. And then postpartum, we don't just snap back to where we were before. We're left with a very different body, Mm -hmm. right? And so those muscles need a bit of a reorientation. Mm -hmm. I start people within days sometimes, like, I just want you to breathe. And I just want you to start, you know, using your breath to feel a little bit of movement in your pelvic floor or feeling how that affects your core muscles. Learning how when you sit down on the toilet, I want you to think about your muscles relaxing because your, your muscles are going to be so nervous to relax because they just stretch so much, mm-hmm. but, but having really tight muscles down there 
after a vaginal birth or a C-section birth can affect hemorrhoids, can affect pain with peeing and pooing and everything. So I want you to reinst reinstate that ability to relax. Or when you cough, I want you to learn to how to help those muscles engage again, because they don't really remember how to very well right now. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when you feel really sore, when you lift your baby or your tummy feels vulnerable, I want you to use your muscles to help you. And you know, so it's very much like learning how to get back to the day to day tasks, reinstating how they worked before, because they're kind of just in shock mode. Yeah, yeah, understandably, right? Understandably. And I think everyone pictures, I always say, like after when people um, picture a vaginal birth, I would say they picture their pelvic floor muscles flapping in the wind after like, that's yeah. what I think women picture yeah. is that everything's flapping in the wind, but that's not how our muscles behave, right? Like if you go back to the ankle sprain, if you roll over your ankle, does your ankle flap after? No, it's stiff, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like protective. It's like protective um, muscle inhibition and swelling and everything as a way for our body to protect itself. And that's what you'll see in and around like your C-section incision or your vaginal, like where your, your episiotomy or your tear, anything down there is that everything's usually in tight mode to try to protect you. So a lot of women's symptoms they're getting of heaviness or pressure or pain is not related to things falling out, but often from the muscles being like afraid to just kind of move again. Oh yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. And, and I had never thought you know, usually we do recommend waiting until six weeks, but that's when we're thinking about that sort of hands-on more intensive therapy. Um, but you're right. It's important to start immediately. And I think when it's whenever you're ready, that's what I always tell people is if you don't want, if you want to take that time to rest and you want to come in at six weeks, awesome. Yeah. But I had a girl reach out at three days the other day and it wasn't because she's like, Mel, it's time for marathon training, but it was more like, you know what, what we did before was so helpful to me to, for my mental health and just understanding my body. She said, I feel like my birth was like amazing and I feel too good. And I'm worried I'm going to do too much is what she reached out saying. She said, can you tell me what's reasonable? Mm -hmm. So literally I explained to her, like she talked to me about what she was feeling and how her birth went and everything. And she said, really, I'm just wondering how often I should wear my belly band. And I want to know I'm having a hard time. I have to nurse my baby all the time laying down. And when I go to sit up, I'm terrified of my diastasis. Mm -hmm. So do you know what I mean? It wasn't like, okay, let's get going on the exercise yeah. routine here. It was more like, okay, let me ease your mind because you're not broken. Yeah. Um, everything that you're describing to me is very normal. Let mm -hmm. me tell you a couple things to help you sit out of bed better because mm -hmm. otherwise they're sitting at home. Like they're so nervous. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always say. If you're sitting at home waiting for something, then reach out. <laughs> Or if you're sitting home wondering if yeah. this is good or bad, then reach out. But often I tell people, you know, make an appointment with, I do a lot of my first appointments online, mm -hmm. just because I say, I don't need to touch you. I don't need to examine you. You're going to tell me how you feel. And I usually pull out my pelvic floor model and show them, okay, here's your tear, you know, describe to me your tears at six o'clock. Okay, here it is. This mm -hmm. stuff's all going to want to feel tight. I want you to visualize this with your breath, just letting go a little bit or yeah. what have. And, and, and that's what I think I'm seeing. I used to wait for six weeks because I was too nervous to do anything yeah. before, but they're, then they come in at six weeks. They're like, Hey Mel, Dr. Sarah gave me the go ahead. Can I start running? I'm like, Whoa, 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 back up. Like we've got to like set the stage here. You haven't even moved your muscles. Like you can't run on that yet. And then they'd be pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I've started so much earlier is meet them where they're at, meet them where they're at, meet them where they're at. Cause sometimes I see Olympians and of course they want to get back sooner than the mom that's focused on relaxation. It, it all depends where you're at. Yeah. 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 It's really interesting. I am um, personally speaking. So I've had three babies. I had them all out the, out the old vagina and my yeah. second was forceps. Yeah. Personally, I've, I've only ever had second degree tears, but I actually didn't do any pelvic physio until after my third, because I just, it wasn't as talked about. Right. And I'm like a maternity physician. I've trained for, I've delivered probably thousands of babies mm -hmm. at this point in my life, but it's just not something that we really commonly talked about. And then I didn't do enough therapy and then I ran too much and now I'm dealing with like a chronic like high hamstring like pelvic floor right because I didn't didn't properly rehab my pelvic floor 
Totally. And I would say that all it is, is that, again, I thought if I was to generalize, obviously everybody's different, but if I was to generalize, most people come in postpartum with a pelvic floor that doesn't have all its movement. Like Mm -hmm. it's like a loss of range of motion. Like it's not simply weak. It's not simply tight. It's a loss of range of motion because of such a big change during pregnancy, followed by almost like a trauma during birth. And I'm speaking for C-section moms too, because yeah, they present very similarly because mm-hmm. the muscles are all a team. And, and so basically it's like a loss of access. And for most of your day, you might not be affected because uh, we live most of our life in the middle of the movement, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? But when you push yourself, whether it be that you need to run hard or breathe hard or create a lot of impact, mm-hmm. that's often when it will show up is that because you have a loss of movement or a loss of strength or that it's like, I can't do everything, Sarah, mm-hmm. like it's not quite back yeah. to normal. And so that's what I would say I start with is like, let's just acknowledge you've been through something. Let's reinstate the motion. Let's reinstate the reflexive nature of it. And then let's like load it. Let's, let's help you run more. Let's help you jump more. Um, let's see when your symptoms are showing up and tinker with that part or whatever. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's so helpful. You know, I think the more education and information we can give to to people in terms of pelvic floor recovery I think the better you're going to feel about yourself and that's what I see is that like it makes a huge difference not only physically and I always say people will do kind of an instead of kind of a little bit better and then a drop and then a little bit better and then a drop like those setbacks are hard mentally Mm -hmm. whereas if you kind of slow and steady understand what's going on and just slow and steady working your way back I find it really helps people mentally to be like, I got this. And if I have a little setback, just like I might with my ankle, that's not catastrophic. It's Mm -hmm. just like, okay, my body's telling me something. Let's address that before we progress or Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I guess that I I think that that's a big one is that you don't have to wait six weeks. And I, I always think it's important. And that's something I think I need to do a better job of educating the physicians in my community too. I'm not going to be asking them to do something intense. Like if anything, I'm helping calm their, their mind and like, you're okay, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really helpful. I wonder if you could touch on what to expect in terms of prolapse after a baby. Cause we yeah. get a lot of panicked calls from, you know, women and people after they've had babies and they're like, oh my gosh, something's hanging out of my vagina. I have to tell you a story about this one girl that came in. I was seeing her during pregnancy. So we had developed a good relationship and she called me after and she's like, Mel, I've got to come see you ASAP. When's your first opening? I have prolapse. And I had to think for a second. Cause I was like, you had a C-section. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't, con- like the me- did you push for a long time? I was trying to figure out like, yeah. what would be the mechanism here or whatever? Anyway, she's like, no, no, it's just, you know. And so I was like, I doubt it. But anyway, she comes in and I was like, tell me why you think you have prolapse. Well, when I look down there, I see something. I'm like, okay, did you ever look before? And she's like, no, not really. And I say, like, okay. And she's like, but when I put my finger in, like it's collapsing. I'm like, did you ever put your finger in before? Like, was there a big open tube there before? And she's like, no, I guess not. And I kind of just showed her that like, your vagina is not a big open tube all the time. Like it'll always feel compressed. And mm-hmm. especially when you sit down or bend over to put your finger in, that tube will compress. I always talk about the vagina, like a toilet paper roll. Like mm-hmm. I show them that it's squishy, like a toilet paper mm-hmm. roll. Mm-hmm. And after like a toilet paper roll has form, but um, it's still bendable, right? And so even before we have babies, our, our bladder that sits kind of in, in front, if you're standing, and your rectum that sits behind, they can encroach on there. Like if you have a big poop in your rectum, it will encroach into your Mm -hmm. vagina just because Mm -hmm. of the squishiness of the toilet paper rolls, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then when a baby comes out of that toilet paper roll, it makes the toilet paper roll very uh, squishy. Like the walls are way more squishy because Mm -hmm. like a baby had to fit out a small tube and that tube needs to stretch. Mm -hmm. And all prolapse is, is encroachment of those neighboring organs or those neighboring tubes on the vagina and so like in the case like when you put your finger in it will feel like things are squishing more because there's been so much stretch and so I always say like I can never say exactly but I say for sure if you're in the first six weeks I know you have some prolapse because I always say we grade prolapse from zero to four like to describe it the most simply where zero is none 
this is what I say, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say for sure a grade one to two prolapse I am expecting after you've had a vaginal birth. Like agree. without, even if you tell me that your vagina feels pristine, I would think that you have grade one or two totally. prolapse. You totally. have to with yeah. all that stretch mm -hmm. and time, this is where time is very important. Mm -hmm. Time is very important to help that tissue become stronger again, just like the ankle, mm -hmm. right? Like you would give it time for those ligaments and everything to have the tension again. Same with the walls of the vagina. And so time alone is very crucial. And one of the best examples of why jumping, running, intense exercise in the first six weeks would not be ideal mm -hmm. in the first six, eight, whatever weeks, because you need the time for the vagina to be more firm again. Things like estrogen are lower when we're nursing. Estrogen gives more form to the toilet paper roll, the vagina. I'm using that interchangeably. Yeah, I got <laughs> Someone that. Someone is it's tuning perfect. in in the middle is like, what the heck is this girl talking about? <laughs> um, and then that the pelvic floor is the support structure from the bottom. And we've talked about how that's having a hard time kind of getting its bearings again. So that's one thing to consider. Yeah. And I think the other huge thing to consider with prolapse is that new moms are they feel weak, they feel nervous, and they do a lot of breath holding to lift things mm -hmm. and, and to exert themselves. And when they're getting back to sit-ups, they do a lot of breath hold to like hoist themselves up. And the pressure, yeah, like prolapse, the biggest thing with prolapse is pressure. The first thing I would want to be like, is like, how are they, how are we managing the pressure? Are they constipated? Are they holding their breath? Are they bearing down? Because that's going to create more squishiness on the vagina. That's going to make things want to encroach more. So I guess that was my very long way of saying, of course you have prolapse mm -hmm. in the early phase. There's things to consider. And that would be one reason I would love to reach out early. Kind of like, how are you managing? Like, if do you feel a lot of heaviness and pressure? Mm -hmm. And first of all, is this just from muscle tension? Like, are you getting the muscle tension confused with heaviness? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They feel the same to a lot of women. And if you do have some prolapse, then what can we do to manage that? yeah, let's get your pelvic floor back online. Let's make sure you're not constipated. Let's make sure that you're breathing, not holding your breath, not creating a lot of extra pressure yeah. to allow the vaginal tissue to recover. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. All these things like, and that I don't even think about that. I'm sure I was doing that breath holding and you think yes. about the increased pressure, putting more stretch on the muscles, right? And that's what so hard about postpartum is that we've gone through so much yet. Our demands are high as a new mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My husband said the other day, he's like, you know what it's kind of like, it'd be like doing open heart surgery on a man and then making him take home a puppy. Totally. Oh my gosh. Your husband is a genius. <laughs> that is such a great example, right? Like, and, and that's something I was reading somewhere about how like C-sections, right? What a phenomenal, incredible, awesome surgery, but like, it's a huge abdominal surgery. And then we're like, mm -hmm. okay, take some Tylenol and ibuprofen and then I'll go take care of it. Manage your baby. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think that rest alone is not enough is that yeah. the demands are high for a new mom. And so, yeah. no, I don't think you need to get back to your goal activity or your goal exercise, but you do need to help your body. Like you have heavy lifting, you have that car seat, you have groceries, you have the stroller. Yeah. And so if you want to recover from your prolapse, like it's not just about Kegels, <laughs> yeah. like you know what I mean? Like th there's, there, it's kind of like learning how to navigate your new body or your temporary new body mm -hmm. and the demands on it. And so, yeah, I think it's hard. It's we're sleep deprived. We like the, 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 the care is not automatic in our healthcare system. So you have to find it and then you yeah. have to figure out what's reliable. And yeah. Yeah. I find that really challenging that you, that physio is not, I mean, we're in British Columbia and it's, there's a tiny bit of MSP coverage, I think, but it's really not something that's incorporated into your care. And it's, it's really a shame for people who can't, who don't have coverage or who can't pay out of pocket um, because it really should be, someone was telling me in some, one of the Scandinavian countries, I think perhaps like pelvic floor physio is like routinely offered. In France. But, yeah. In France, they have like 10 visits covered yeah. and it's, it's very proactive. I mean, if you look at I mean, we talk about how, oh, mental health is so important for postpartum women. Absolutely. But I think if you address their physical concerns, at least give them some tools to help recover physically, I think you'd see a huge improvement in men. I see it clinically. Yeah. Huge difference yeah. in the women that are like, I got this. And even though my body's not perfect, I know what to do and I get why it doesn't feel perfect instead of like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Right. And, yeah. um, 
I think we would see such a different, like we'd see a huge difference, not only in our long-term health, yeah, but just in the mental health of women and how they get back to activity, how they navigate their relationships. Like this is, this stuff is all affects their relationship yeah. big time. Oh, too. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, right? So, yes, I think that, I think that, um, I, th I think that it's all, I think that it's all important and I get that the access is sometimes hard for people and yeah. Yeah. yeah it's challenging, but I think we're starting to, it's starting to become more normalized. Yes. And, you know, I think also if you educate care providers, then, then we can give as much information as we can, right? Like making sure your, your bowels are moving smoothly, making sure you're not holding your breath and not you know, tensing your muscles all the time. It just by no means an area of expertise of mine, but I'm starting to learn little bits that I can share with my patients. Well, I think that when we understand, like I had a client come in the other day that, I mean, obviously coverage, I think with her physicians hard right now because of COVID, like she's, yeah. she's not able to go in and see. And so some things don't come up on zoom or mm -hmm. phone call, mm -hmm. but she was calling me, she had major um, pain, like pain issues in her pelvic floor after a fairly traumatic vaginal birth. But it came down to like, I think a lot of her pain was just coming from persistent hemorrhoids, anal fissures, and like constipation issues. Like, I think at the end of the day, like we could do all the, I could talk to her all about all the breathing and stretching but she had she was you know taking iron and like all sorts of things that I'm like this is not I don't feel comfortable talking to you about medications that's not my expertise yeah. listen I want you to go back to your doctor call your doctor and just mention that you're having a hard time getting these bowel movements stopped because you're doing everything you can but being able to understand like this is my expertise this is your expertise totally. and, and being able to you know and, I, and and it was a simple fix she called her doctor and her doctor ordered some blood works oh actually you know, your, your iron's fine or like yeah. you're, you don't have to take anything anymore or whatever. So yeah. It's so true it's, how working collaboratively can really improve care. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think one of my last, I want to really quickly bring up like perineal massage and, and yeah. C-section massage. I think yeah. those are both postpartum tips that I would tell people that are good things to look into. I think that those are good things to go over individually with a care mm -hmm. provider, mm -hmm. just because sometimes there's different needs. And I think a lot of people feel nervous just tackling perineal massage without talking to someone about it. But I would say that's something that you see the long term effects of often people will come in years after and they're like, I, Melissa, I am still leaking or I'm still having pain with sex. And often it just comes down to the perineum stretch so much. It did its best to get back after, but there's just some small areas that don't want to let go very well. And that can happen with a C-section scar too. I, I would say it's something to get on top of early because it's easier to mobilize at an, mm -hmm. at an early time. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's another take home. A lot of people are like, should I do it? Am I a candidate? And I said, everybody should, should be looking into that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had someone yesterday who was, you know, their C-section scar is still a bit painful in that, you know, it's um, the numbness helping massage and resensitize those tissues is so important yeah and there's just so much um underneath I, I always think of it like an iceberg there's so much underneath and a lot of those women will be noticing weird pulling when they're moving yeah even bladder frequency weird things with their bladder pain with sex like mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff can all be related to all the tissues that kind of run down into the pelvis mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and you know I didn't really think of perineal massage for postpartum, but it makes sense, right? Like there's scar tissue there. Yes. Yeah. I get, I get quite a few people. Yes. There's scar tissue. And I get quite a few people that come in. I had two yesterday, I think that were both one was I'm still tearing every time I pee. I'm 16 months postpartum. Mm -hmm. She was, and she was like, and she said, I haven't had sex in 16 months. I'm terrified. And all I did was explain to her like the muscles of the perineum mm -hmm. and just like, do you feel how you're holding tense all the time? I didn't even touch her. And she said, oh my gosh, like the pain's gone. And all I did was realize that there's nothing wrong. And then I needed to kind of let that go. And lots of times, yeah, I would say that it's, I think of the pelvic floor, like a trampoline, like it needs to be very bouncy. Yeah. And yeah. The scar tissue just stops it from bouncing as well, yeah. which will affect running and sex and everything. Yeah. And all those important things yeah. that we do to stay happy. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Pelvic, floor, pelvic floor health is integral to like having good mental health, right? Yeah. And I think that, like, I think that, you know, we talked about it really quickly before we recorded is I think sometimes people think that pelvic floor physios just do Kegels. And I think it's important. I think, think of us more maybe as, you know, we, 
probably are the ones that know most about the pregnant and postpartum body and just rehab Mm -hmm. in general. So whether it be diastasis, tailbone pain, rib pain, like anything that's kind of like sex issues, (laughs) pee and poop issues, like Mm -hmm. all of it that comes after yes, is partially related to the pelvic floor, but the pelvic floor doesn't work in isolation. It works with the rest of our body. And honestly, as, as um, like in our, in our general physio training, we don't learn it in depth. And so those of us that work with a lot of pregnant and postpartum women and have the training generally have a lot of education around pregnancy and postpartum in general. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's what yeah. I tell people because people are often like in pregnancy, I think we underutilize pelvic physio in terms of like back pain and pubic symphysis pain and dysfunction and that you're trained and you understand the body, right? And that you can help with all of those because they can be really debilitating in pregnancy, sciatica, rib pain. I had terrible rib pain in pregnancy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Exactly. I always describe the pregnant body like a balloon and I say the whole balloon's affected like the bottom's affected the front is affected big time the ribs are affected like the diaphragm's affected at the top like the whole thing is affected and they they all work together to provide you a lot of strength that you take for granted because it's so automatic but that automatic system is going through a huge change during pregnancy and birth that's what I think makes it the hardest to recover postpartum is they're not muscles we're used to thinking about yeah oh it's so true right they're just automatic you just they're like on autopilot until you've had a baby and then you're hypersensitive, but you don't know what to do about it. Yeah. 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 And I think anyone I've talked to or any podcast I've listened to, everyone's like, they're all, we're all holding them in sort of hyper contraction, right? They're so tense. And that's what we do in life in general right now. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, that's our nature when something's wrong. It's just like, that's what our body does is I think sometimes we feel like our body's working against us, but I always describe like your body thinks it's helping you right now. It's bringing like extra attention to the area but sometimes like, yeah, exactly. That, that tension is not overly powerful, right? It's yeah. Sometimes yeah, quite it can be harmful. Yeah. So I'm going to recap our top tips that you gave were rest, mm-hmm. but rest is not enough. So mm-hmm. connecting with a provider when you're, when you feel ready, right? So that could be three days postpartum. It could be six weeks postpartum, but knowing that it doesn't mean rehabilitation doesn't mean you're starting training and, you know, intense workout. It's just helping you figure out the new normal and helping to rehab your pelvic floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that a degree of prolapse is, is normal. If you're worried, call mm-hmm. and that it takes a team to support you postpartum. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We were, before we recorded, we were talking about diastasis. And so I think that would be a great future podcast because that is a huge conversation to get into. Yes. And something that I think a lot of people ask about. So people will, listeners, you can look forward to another podcast with Mel and I about diastasis. Mm -hmm. Um, But before we go, I wondered if you could share how people can access you if they are local to, to, you're in Kelowna, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not from BC, so I always get Kelowna and Kamloops confused. That's okay. And I think you have some online, an online course, right? Is that right? So I work in Kelowna at a clinic called Wave Physio. And you find me there. I also, I talk actually quite a bit about everything to do with what we just talked about on my Instagram account, which is just mommy berries health. And then yes, I have an online program. I would say I created it because I was um, thinking there was a certain amount of information that everybody should know Mm -hmm. during pregnancy for birth prep and postpartum recovery, because I find I repeat a lot of the same things over and over again. And no, an online program doesn't know exactly you. But I always think of it almost like, you know how we all read things going into our pregnancy? Like, I want to learn about the development and I weren't, not, that's not telling you about your baby. It's telling you about the general, right? And so that's what I go through. It's like step-by-step step what I suggest, you know, women learn during pregnancy, for example, like what are these core and pelvic floor muscles and how do I have control over them? What do I do about things like pubic symphysis pain, like, and belly bands? Like what is all that in pregnancy Mm -hmm. exercise during pregnancy? I go over the guidelines and how you can apply them to what you like to do. Mm -hmm. I talk about physical birth prep, meaning like, I always say you have control of the whole, (laughs) like, (laughs) I want you to know how to control the whole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then mental birth prep, like being prepared, like to be able to calm the nervous system, basically Mm -hmm. (laughs) to learn how your pelvic floor is related to your nervous system. And then postpartum, it walks you through like, okay, what should you do in the first few days postpartum, like swelling management, rest, think about your posture type of thing. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. then it works you through progresses you step-by-step depending on when you're ready. So yes, that can be found on my website, mommyberries.com. Awesome. That's really cool. What a great resource for people. 
Yeah. I've been finding it really helpful. It supplements, it supplements seeing your therapist. And yeah. I always say like that in that program, I bet you it would take me 12 sessions to go through everything that's in there. But then when someone comes to show up at my clinic or someone in Victoria's clinic, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, I got this. I know what this all means. Now, can you tell me what this looks like in my body? Like, can you assess yeah. me or can you tell me about my diastasis? But otherwise they come in, they're like, my friend sent me and I don't know anything about the pelvic floor and I spend my whole session educating. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the, the nice thing about the program is it, it starts them and then when they get their feet wet and right. And then when they come to see me, it's kind of like, Kate, let's get to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. That's sort of similar to like our, some of the online courses and programs that we yeah. put together. It's more about empowering people with the information yes. about, so we talk about like pregnancy, the changes to expect in your body and the many different things that can happen to your body during mm -hmm. birth. Yeah, that's really totally. exciting. We'll link that yeah. in our um, in our show notes. Awesome. I, I, I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. And I think it's it's such a big thing for you guys to kind of, I don't know, you're definitely paving the way here, like kind of putting yourselves out there and being open minded. And I think that's what we all need to be is open minded, yeah. right? I yeah. agree. I agree. We're all here to learn from one another, right? Absolutely. Awesome. I, I really appreciate this. Well, thanks for chatting with us today, Melissa. Yeah, we'll see you. Thanks for listening. Make sure to check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca and to sign up for our community for weekly bump blasts. Make sure to check us out on Instagram or Facebook at she.found.motherhood and head on over to your favorite podcast app and leave a review and a five-star rating. If you enjoyed this podcast, take a pic of yourself listening to it and share it on social. Make sure to tag us on it so we know to keep making them.